Welcome back to Families in Action right here on KHTS AM 1220, your hometown station. Carrie, we are hey. about to tee up right here with our guests today for a very, very special topic. And just before we go there, once again, I want to repeat, we are going to be talking about sexual abuse and a conference coming up. So if you have young ones, you might want to just pay a special attention here. We're not going to get into anything that's going to cause a problem, but you're the parent and it's up to you. Yep, and again, if it was my kid, they'd be sitting right in the car listening. They'd be listening. Day. And I was five years old when I was abused. <clears throat> if someone had warned me about it, you know, if my parents had given me a teaching moment, yep. it would, I wouldn't have had it happen. You know, and, the, and that's so true because so many parents are afraid to talk to their children about, I was going to say drugs and this, but really when it comes to sex and abuse, more people are afraid, are, are timid, more intimidated to talk to their children about that than anything else. And that's one of the most important things we can do for our children. Yes. You know, I'm a, I'm a, I work with high-risk kids, been doing this for almost all my adult life. And anytime we have a bunch of kids that are really in trouble, when we do these, call it, we call them marathon groups, where you kind of break them down a little bit and, and, and you make it safe. And they feel, when they start sharing, almost all their secrets are some kind of sexual abuse. So it's so it's so out there, and nobody wants to talk about it. So it's it's kind of one of those kind of things. Hey, you better start talking about it because I'm telling you, 25 to 50 percent of the kids I deal with have some kind of sexual abuse in their in their growing up worlds. I wouldn't be surprised it was a lot higher than that. I'm trying to yeah. So, what are the statistics? Uh, by the t age of 18, uh, uh, for a boy, one in six. Yeah. That's the ones they know about. It's one in six, folks. Yeah. For a girl, one in four. Yeah. And those are the numbers they know about. Yeah. Well, and Carrie, I'm going to reintroduce. That's, but that's scary, man. I'm going to reintroduce our, our guest today, just yeah, yeah. so everybody out there that's listening knows who we're talking to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Dan Broyles, who one of our One of our local heroes local here hero. in Santa Clarita, and I mean that. Dan is uh, is a pear cat a pear cast. A pear cat. <laughs> he is really <laughs> try that one. Say that three times fast. Johnny Cat. <laughs> He's the pastor of care and marriage ministry at Grace Baptist Church in Santa Clarita, and along with him is Bob Leninger, who's the associate pastor at North Park Community Church. Very cool. And uh, Bob, you already brought this up, so I, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna press on with this. You actually work with senior adults, and I understand that you started a group called Grief Share, and during that time, you started recognizing that you had been sexually abused as a five year old. Yes, that's true. I it happened as I was going through that <clears throat> that it was releasing me a little bit to to open my memories of sixty years prior. Right. And and so I went to my therapist and started talking with him about it and worked, been working on it for five or six years now. And your story is very typical of males, though, because they tend to push it down. And when we talked last, a couple of weeks ago, about this very topic, mm -hmm. Dan, you were saying that what happens is it's not until much later in life that they deal with it. And we're talking about what in your late forties or yeah. fifties. A lot of them don't, it doesn't come out in their late teens or twenties. It's usually forties or fifties. I see typically mm -hmm. um, where it affects um, how they are parents or their marriage, and their wife start pushing them to address it, or something triggers it, or they see it in their grandchildren some risk, right. and they finally are willing to come and talk to somebody. Wow. And and Bob, you found a need after what a, a, about a year and a half of therapy, you decided you wanted to start a group. Yeah, I, I actually decided on it earlier, but uh, <clears throat> didn't feel I was ready to, to be involved in it. And I found a need, and uh, I have a group growing at, at, at North Park. That it's probably the only male one in this valley. And it uh, uh, in it, I've never had less than four, four guys. And what's the group specifically for, so it's for people that are listening? It's for sexual abuse rehabilitation for men. Very cool. So. And I just think that's a, it's a great resource. I know people from even our church community, I've sent guys there, and it's been so helpful because, um, and I know this is with both men and women, is they both feel so alone, mm -hmm. or it's not mm -hmm. just, and it's not just them. And so, and in, in our culture, it's easier even to talk about even alcohol than it is their oh, sexual right. abuse. And right. so, I've talked to many men who are going to your typical AA or 12-step group, who they've been drinking to deal with the pain right. of that abuse. And so 
um, they found this. Or, or they st- or they stop drinking, and then it all comes up, and, yep. and the only way they can figure on on bearing it is by drinking more. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and you know, I used to run special groups for for kids that were um, molested or molest or kids that molested, and and I'll tell you, it's it's. I believe this. We're as sick as our secrets. When we start talking about stuff that bothers us and hurts us and, and things that have hurt us in the past, we start getting better. And the first thing we have to do is learn how to forgive who? Ourselves. That's right. Because imagine a 5-year-old or a 10-year-old or a 12-year-old and somebody older taking advantage. How could it be that kid's fault? It can't be. So we have to forgive ourselves no matter what and realize, hey, I was... I was a victim, and I'm going to figure out. And by by forgiving ourselves, we can move on. Well, a lot of times the sh- the shame that is felt is really the shame of that should be for the perpetrator. Exactly. But the shame the the victim absorbs all the shame. Yeah. Um, it really absorbs it in the wrong place, and so uh, this can have just so many negative consequences on how they see themselves, their view of trust and relationships. Yeah. And, and you know, the, I was talking to a kid actually last week that says, you know, I was, I was 10. That's how old he was when his um, uncle molested him. But, it, but it, he worked on this kid for a year before he did it. And he says, you know what the terrible thing is? He says, it, it felt good. Well, sex feels good. It doesn't mean that you were a participant, that you wanted to do this. You were 10 years old. You were taken advantage of, yeah. Period. And you could see the relief in this kid's face. You, went, you know what? You're right. Yeah. And so. you were just talking about something important, Carrie, because people do tend to look at this and say, well, who, who's victimized by this, mm-hmm. et cetera? Well, yeah. Or who perpetrates this? Who's doing all of this? Because we all have our own idea about, mm-hmm. about this. Uh, it's estimated that 60% of the perpetrators of sexual abuse are known to the child but not family members. So their family, friends, babysitters, care providers, neighbors, somebody that knows him. About 30% of perpetrators of child sexual abuse are family members. Mm-hmm. And only about 10% of perpetrators of child sexual abuse are strangers to the child. So only about 10%. And not all yeah. perpetrators because are most, adults. Because most people that take advantage of kids get the kids' trust first. Yes. Yeah. And and not all perpetrators are adults. An estimated 23% of reported cases of child sexual abuse are perpetrated by individuals under the age of 18. Mm-hmm. And I understand that that's on the rise with young perpetrators. Well, especially with the access to the online right. um, garbage that's out right. there. And so uh, what happens is uh, that kid can feel shocked by what they see online. And it's a way to... Al- unfortunately even groom a child to earn that trust and think this through folks almost all children have cell phones now mm-hmm. 10 years old and up it's mm-hmm. just where the society is i'm not saying it's bad i mean it's a way for us to contact our kids and, and, and all kinds of other good stuff but on this phone if i was to type in porn there'd be over half a million free sites of the most graphic pornography you can see free mm-hmm. so that means our children that has cell phones have access to this. And I, I'll tell you what, I don't know any parents that have a, give their kid a cell phone that doesn't have access. I hear it all the time, oh, you can, you can whatever, um, protect it, but I, I don't know anyone who yeah. does. So that means our children are getting this. So you imagine a 16, 17-year-old kid watching this stuff that has a little friend that's a little brother or sister or something like that. It becomes dangerous. Kids so, like to yes. experiment. Yes, it, it happens so frequently that we, you know, it doesn't get it doesn't get advertised. It doesn't get uh, turned in. It just swept under the rug. Yeah, pretty. It's terribly sad. Yes. Well, one of the things we want to do is make sure that people know what's coming up and how they can be a part of that because th- this is very important. It's coming up this but, Thursday, but, right? Before we before we go there. How do you deal with something like that? You wake up, you're 40, 50 years old, and all those thoughts come back. What do you do? Well, you have to... Because um, I know people that are listening to this show can yeah. relate to that. Yeah. What you have to do is, is find some, some place, some people who've been through this, who you can relate to and start to trust. Because as you uh, share with, with people uh, that you trust, 
now all of a sudden this whole thing be starts becoming safe. Right. And and it takes a lot of time. And you can realize then that you maybe, hey, I was a victim. Yes. Then I'm not the only one that feels this way and been through this. Right. And yeah. that lonely, miserable feeling that you have in your gut yeah. kind of gets a little, little better. Yeah. Well, and that, there can be so much anxiety, I know, um, yeah. for men, is reaching out to get help. Yeah. Um, the amount of it, and, and those guys don't talk about anxiety very much mm -hmm. at all, but when I know I've sent or recommended guys go to the group, you just feel the nervousness, right. like, I, I don't know if I can ever do that. However, to get better, they, they need to not suffer alone, mm -hmm. um, and suffering in isolation and loneliness just makes it worse. Yeah, it's pretty miserable stuff. It is. Yeah. So what are we doing? It's this Thursday, right? It's Friday. Yeah, Friday. tell us Friday. about what's going on and, and what and why people should come and all that stuff. We're having a, a, a conference on this designed for people who've been abused, people who are related to people who have been abused, friends, that kind of thing. Um, it's also for professionals because there's continuing education units. And we have a, a, a nationally known speaker, Diane Langberg, who's one of the uh, foremost professionals in this area of uh, sexual abuse, and she's a very, very good speaker. And uh, really looking forward to seeing people get help. And it's taking place at your church, right? It's North taking Park place church. at North Park Church. It's this, fri this uh, Friday. It starts at 8.30. But what do we say to people out there that say, but I don't want to go to a church for this? Uh, where else are you going to go? <laughs> that's where the conference is exactly the conference uh, yeah. is there there's no excuse yeah and i don't know of any other any other groups in this valley for men i know of a couple others for women mm -hmm. and that's it yeah well and, and i would say to add to to what you just asked there mike is there's people who are hurting because of abuse both within churches and outside of churches this is across mm -hmm. the board where there's been pain and betrayal that's occurred and so this is not uh, something just for people church people at all this is really for the community right. because how can we grow as a community if we're not addressing some of these type of problems right. it starts at 8 30 right it starts and at 8 30 and goes through 2 30 to 2 30 and there is a fee yep. yes it's 40 dollars uh and it has lunch we mm -hmm. have a lunch with it. Steak uh, and lobster, by the way. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's sushi, right? No. <laughs> I wish. Uh, and, and we also have a group fee of for five or more people. It's thirty dollars. Oh, okay. Each. So, a group of folks can get together. that have been they've been talking among each other. Yes. So, th I mean, this is this is a way for them to to find out how to deal with this. Even I'll tell you how not to deal with this. Right. And I think that's a really good point because yeah. uh, b both both Bob and I have had so many people come to us and gotten really bad advice right. or suggestions on how to cope with this. And people have really good intentions, but they'll have someone come to them and say, you know, that was just such a long time ago. You should just kind of forgive and forget. Right. Right. Or those type of kind of cliches that actually make it worse and it minimizes the pain. And that person actually feels more lonely right. in facing yes. the pain. Or That's a little bit like saying, I, I have this fish hook in my arm. How do I get it out? And somebody said, well, just forget about it for Leave a while. It It'll go right. away. Yeah. Right. <laughs> You're right. And so part of this is to equip us as a community on what specific things can be said mm -hmm. and to really be helpful that would um, encourage someone for further healing and who who specifically is this this for but i'll tell you what the more one of those kind of things avoidance makes it worse mm -hmm. it's like that's the kind of thing when you're lying down in bed at night and you turn off the lights and you close your eyes it keeps you up that haunts you mm -hmm. and what i found that the, the, the more you talk about stuff that hurts you the better you start feeling. That doesn't mean when you walk in a room and say, hey, I was, I was molested when I was three, and then it went on until I was 17, you might feel worse until you feel better, if that makes sense, because now you have to deal with it. Right, or one of the things is it's masked by a different problem. Mm -hmm. So we had a situation where I was talking with some uh, female in this situation, and it could be a guy, where she thought she had an anger problem. Right, And yes, there was an anger problem that needed to be addressed, and so she's trying to work on not yelling as much and those type of things when she get, gets upset. But what was fueling that 
is the abuse and the rape that happened when right. she was a young girl and her feeling powerless. And now, decades later, she wants power mm -hmm. or won't be ever taken advantage of. And so the anger just kind of comes out so quickly. And so right. Um, right. this can come out in just so many ways. It's in misplaced. Lives. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And one of the problems that we face in our society, and Bob, you had, you brought this up before we started the show today, and that is it's a taboo subject. Very taboo. Who wants to talk about it? And as a man, especially, nobody, you don't want to, you know, this is dealing with your manhood, and men don't get this happen to them. So mm -hmm. uh, very taboo. People don't want to talk about it. And as we talked about earlier, the, um, sex is such a, a uh, taboo subject in our society, even worse than drugs and alcohol. Which, if you think about it, is ridiculous. And I mean that. If we're adult enough to have sex and have children... We need to be adult enough to talk to our kids about it, too, and, and make our, sure they're safe. But isn't that our job as, as parents yes. to train our children? Yes, so. and I know that, we, that um, we talk to our children when they were young about it, and we let them know if anybody ever does this, takes advantage of you, touches you when you feel uncomfortable, let us know immediately. Mm -hmm. And we will act on it. And at one occasion, it happened. Mm -hmm. And um, within, within two minutes, they had let us know. We dealt with it appropriately and uh, put an end to it mm -hmm. before it got any, any worse and uh, the person had to pay a severe consequence for yes. it. So it's kind of one of those kind of things that we need to remember. These are our children. And they're young, and, and uh, they could be taken advantage of really easily. So we need to really make it safe, and we need to talk to them and educate them. We don't teach them who's going to. Right, right. So, so one of the things, just to, to add to that, is I would say as parents, I was reading, uh, asking yourself, are you a good parent, is the wrong question. Mm -hmm. uh, I would encourage you to say, am I the type of person that my child wants to be one day, is a better question. But it's a little more humbling of a question because then you have to look at your own life, your own habits. It's a great question. And it, yeah. it's, it's hard to kind of wiggle out of that um, answer. And so part of this is looking at my own life uh, before I try to look at the lives of, of our child. And I'd also say that where uh, the areas that we don't talk about as parents are the future blind spots of our kids. Right. And so we're almost fueling blind spots for our children. We have whole pockets of our lives that we might observe, might see, but not notice or talk about. Mm -hmm. And I love what you said. Am I the parent that I want my kids to turn into? Mm -hmm. I mean, think about it. We are, I tell you what, I want to be my kid's hero. If he can't or if she can't find one, I want him to, to wake up one day when I want to be like my dad. So it's kind of one of those kind of things that walk like you talk. If you want your kids to be somebody, be that person. So just to add to that in regards to, like, for instance, with Bob's group, I've told men who have this as part of their story, I hope you can go to this group so that you can show your kids you have courage. Mm. This is about courage to do it. This is not about avoiding or not man enough, not strong enough, but the courage to face, which is really difficult um, to face. And so I think for especially for men to see it as a way to have courage to face these things versus I'm giving up my manhood or guys don't need help or all those things. It's just a better way of seeing it. it is on that note, Mike. It's time to take a break, Harry, but we're going to come back and, and, and complete this, and we're going to get some phone numbers and all that, so anybody that's out there listening uh, can make a call if they need to. We'll be right back with more Families in Action right here on KHTS AM 1220, your hometown station. Welcome back to Families in Action on AM 1220 KHTS. Glad that you're with us. Hey, I just got a did you know, and this was um, on my Facebook, and I just heard a beep, and I looked at it. It fits right into what we're doing. There you go. And here's what it says. Did you know there is a stronger link between childhood trauma and addiction than there is between obesity and diabetes pretty heavy huh yes two-thirds of addicts report being abused as children that means that the war on drugs is a war on traumatized people that just need help and i'll tell you what in 30 years of treating people this is true so the need for hope and help is just so significant when someone has gone through a trauma. And so I'm actually curious, Bob, what's it been like for you reaching out for help as a guy and talking to that, uh, your, uh, sp your spouse, a counselor, a friend about some of the trauma? What's it been like even for you? It, it was actually uh, very hard. Um, I might even be a polite way of saying it. Um, because 
you have to go back through the memories to get well. And, and so remembering the things that happened, kept ha it kept coming slowly. And so each time there was a new revelation in my mind, a, f a new freedom for me to speak, became uh, a very stressful, stressful time, sometimes even with tears. Um, you know, when your uncle takes advantage of you when you're five, it, it mm -hmm. just, it, it brings all kinds of shame, it brings all kind of, uh, it makes you feel like you're a nothing, you have no value, uh, and you, you know, you can go on and on and on about what it does. And the anger issues that we talked about earlier were, were mine. And so, it, uh, getting through all that, the anger issues started getting a lot better as I dealt with this. I didn't, I didn't really have to deal with the anger issue itself. So, so just curious, what you said the word freedom earlier. What does that mean to you, freedom? Um, I can look at what happened to me, and it no longer affects me. I can, it, it comes to my, it comes, my, once in a while it'll, it'll tweak me a little bit, but basically when it, when I, I can look at it, and I can remember the details of it, and, and not be uh, mm -hmm. pained by it so much. It's, it's they always say time heals all, I don't know about no. that, but I'll tell you what time does. Time and it makes it helps it come become easier to deal with stuff if you're dealing with it. The if key, you're dealing with it, the key it. is if you're dealing with exactly. it. Exactly. Right. It it might never go away, but it becomes a whole lot easier to live with, and you you can learn to forgive yourself and realize, hey, I was a victim. It wasn't my fault. Okay. On that note, I know that. This Thursday, people don't want to miss this thing if they're even thinking, well, should I go? The answer is yes. So why don't you tell them a little bit more about it? We only have about a minute left and that kind of stuff. Um, the conference is designed for people to get some knowledge uh, on, on, what, on what this is and how bad it is and what kind of help they can start getting. And again, we're talking about sexual abuse. It's sexual abuse, right. Um, st statistically, they say this is much worse than physical abuse or emotional abuse. One in six men or one kids, boys, mm -hmm. and one in four girls. That's right, by the age of 18. That, that's a lot of people. It's a lot of people. And With a lot of pain. Yeah. And a lot of secrets. What's a phone number they can call if they need some more information? So they can call me at 661-296-6784. At, uh, and I can answer their questions. This is... This is not just for Christians, just because it's at a Christian church. It's for anybody, because uh, this is something that happens across the board, pretty much equally. It doesn't matter if it's faith, if they're faith-based people or not. Uh, it's cons pretty consistent. And Dan, what's a phone number for you? That they so call? the number at Grace Baptist is 296-8737, extension 152. And the website for the conference is northpark.com backslash sexual abuse. Northpark.com backslash sexual abuse. And it's Friday. It's this Friday, June. Oh, this Friday. This Friday, Friday, June 10th. And, and the message here is you don't have to live with the pain. Right. That's correct. The pain... The pain is severe, but you don't realize it because you've got it buried so far. Yeah, and it manifests in all kinds of different ways. Oh, boy. On that note, I want to thank you guys for coming, and, and it's awful brave of you to come in here and, and talk about um, that. And um, you're, you're also one of our local heroes that can help other people deal with this and, and uh, go on and live good lives. So thank you for all you guys are doing. And Dan, as always. Well, thank you again. Thanks, thanks a million for all you do. Until next week, Mike. Well, Carrie, we'll be right back here. Same station. Same station. <laughs> <laughs> you guys got that on tape? Again, I have to go out and rent another pair of lips. I don't know what's happening here. Anyway, we'll be back next week with Families in Action right here on KHTS AM 1220, your hometown station.